YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Gunman Raw. So today we're going to be doing a bit of a little spot repair here. So what's happening is we actually, I sprayed this car, I remember spraying it. I can't remember what I sprayed on it, but I do remember the colour and the shape of the vehicle. But we did, I think we did, yeah, front bumper or something like that. But either way, the owners picked something. The owners said that that wasn't there before. So my boss told me just to do a little spot repair. <clears throat> At the end of the day, I'm not here to um, pass judgment on whether or not spot repairs should or shouldn't be done. I'm just here to do my job. My boss told me to do a little spot repair, so I said okay. So, yeah, at the end of the day, like, you got to pick your battles. So, I'll give you a look at what my boss wanted me to do first. And I said, nah, look, I'm not really comfortable doing that. Look, I mean, I would prefer to spray the entire panel. Don't get me wrong, it's not my choice, you know, don't, don't get it the wrong. Look, I'm not saying I don't like doing spotties, I actually quite like doing spot repairs. Um, but yeah, look, I, I know they're not the best way of doing it. Um, but yeah, my boss is just like, no, nah, just do a spot repair. So, look, he originally, he actually wanted me to, so there was a little scratch inside here, which I just filled it out, that didn't need any filler. And then there was that one there. So he originally wanted me to just go up here and keep it really small and said, man, that like in there, I, I don't want my color up on the edge. Um, and I, I just said, look, we'll come down to the next edge, make it a little bit bigger. And I think we'll save ourselves a bit of a headache tomorrow morning. Look, if I wasn't confident even going down to that next line, I'd do the whole door, but yeah, it sort of turns into a bit of a major. I guess, look, the fact that we're doing a spot repair says to me that the boss is probably just wearing the cost. So if it was an insurance job, we I would be very surprised if he would get me to do it this way. Because he would just say to the insurance company, hey, we missed this damage, pay to have the door and the fender stripped and painted properly. They would then have to take all the parts off the mirrors and you know, I'd probably have like an hour's worth of remove and refit. Not the biggest, not the end of the world, I'm not saying it's like oh, that hard of a job or anything really, because it's not, but um, yeah, the fact that we are doing a spot repair says to me the boss just wants to keep keep the overheads down and doesn't want to overcapitalize on the job. <coughs> but I could be totally wrong there, I'm just guessing. I, I actually try to stay out of their, their business. I, I like, one thing I like about working here is if you just keep your head down, ass up, you can stay out of trouble and you don't need to get too political i don't need to know all of their business i don't need to know all of their business even the, the painters and the panel beaters i just come here to do my job man and as long as i do my job well i can go home um proud of my day's work and happy i don't need to buy into the rest of it so yeah i don't know some of the shops you work in can get a bit political if you know what I mean, like it, like certain painters and panel beaters and office workers and all that sort of trying to one up each other, if you know what I mean. Always sort of like bagging each other out to the boss, thinking that they can make themselves look good and and whatever. So as I say, that's that's one thing I've always liked about working at this place. It's you can usually just uh, come into work, do your job, and yeah, pretty straightforward getting a little bit sidetracked there so as I mask I don't know as I've always said like I find masking one of those things like there's not much else I can say like I'm I'm putting the masking tape down Let us know your thoughts on um, spot repairs. If, if you're better than this, tell me and tell the world how much better than me you are because you don't do spot repairs and you've got morals, you know? Tell us all about that. Um, but if you love doing them, tell us tell us how much you love doing a good spotty too. I've, I always used to see it as a bit of a challenge, you know? Um, but now it's more just like, I don't know, <laughs> easy <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I don't really find. <clears throat> much about um, my daily, I, I, yeah, I don't really get much challenge out of work, which to be honest, isn't really a good thing, you know, but it, I mean, yeah, it is what it is. 
like to keep to continue growing as a person you do actually want to do things that challenge you you know what i mean and that that means you you become you're getting better and you're learning new things and stuff like that but at the end of the day man like i'm here to paint cars like there's only so much you can learn about painting cars if you know what i mean so there's only so much new painting cars techniques that you can learn i guess and it just comes a point when you've just got to do it. It's like, well, the car needs painting, just get in and do it. But um, yeah, look, one, one thing that I I can't um, I can't really uh, what's the word? Uh, I can't forgive people that don't try. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'll give up on people that give up on themselves. Like you'll see them and they're just not even putting all the effort in that they can if you know what i mean and it's like well if you're not putting the effort in to learn your trade or even just to get the job done then why might why should i put the effort into you if you know so that's what sometimes um with some apprentices and stuff like that i just sort of take a step back i'm like no nah, I've, I've tried with you and you just you're not even helping yourself anymore so i stop helping them don't get me wrong like I'll still treat everyone with the same amount of respect that they, they give me, but um, yeah, I don't know, just sort of stop going out of your way to help people that don't help themselves, if you know what I mean. You see some people are just sort of off, they're off in with the pixies, they're off with the fairies sometimes, like they're not even, not even concentrating on what they're doing, let alone giving it their all, you know what I mean. Yeah, I know, like sometimes these days you get the apprentices and they they don't want to do the polishing or they don't want to do the, the prime ups or whatever it be. And it's like, man, I, I've been doing this for, well, since, yeah, like 20 years this year, actually. So I've been doing this for more than 20 years. And like, I was sweeping up the floors this morning because no one else would do it, you know? Like, so, yeah, like I was washing cars a couple of weeks ago because I don't I even have to be told to do it. Like, I, there's work, there, there was work next door. There was cars that need painting um there was nothing in the paint shop we'll just go out and wash cars i don't have to be told to do that it's a job and it needs doing it's like yeah i don't know not really that hard for me to figure something like that out when you get people that they're always complaining that they have to do tasks that they don't want to do it's like well it's just work man <laughs> it's just work what else can i say Yeah, so I decided to put the um, the primer on here last, just so that I only had to mask the car up only once. So I'm going really, really, really dusty with this primer. It's just a bit of 1K primer. As you see there, just, just enough to get it covered. I'll then unmask this. And by the time I finish this mask in here, that'll be right to sand. Really not gonna take long. Don't need to drag that airline all the way over there. So yeah, I've actually got everything in this booth here now that I need to do this job start to finish. I, th I decided to bring it all in just because I knew I was going to be doing a video. So I thought I'd get everything ready so that we can go um, start to finish and I won't even have to leave the booth. So I've got the prep sole and the water cleaner. I've got my little sanding pad and because I put that on so dry it's pretty much dry straight away I didn't didn't load it up or anything and again here like you know this is not ideal I would rather not to have to do this kind of thing but well you gotta do what you gotta do man what is it like an old Brian Adams song I think it was Brian Adams or something like that I love that line that in that song he goes ain't no use in complaining when you got a job to do so um too many people just love to have a good old complain, you know? Oh, oh, so hard on me. My life's so hard. So I've got to go and buff a car or I don't like washing cars. Well, mate, the job's got to be done. Ain't no use in complaining. That's why I've always loved that line. Just get in, get it done. All right. 
looking good. So I'll, I did decide to put this on last so that we can peel it off as soon as the job's done. Or maybe give it like a couple of minutes. I might even go clean the guns out and then and peel it off. We'll see how we go. We'll figure something out. So we'll give that a light scuff. So these are just super fine pad. Nice, so I'll sort of stop the shrink back from happening. What do we got there? Water cleaner, I'll give it a water cleaner. Oh, actually they, they recommended doing it the other way around. We'll do it the other way around. I'm sure it's not gonna make any difference. Oops. Yeah, so there's chips and that all the way up here. That one, I, I thought I'd do that one, but these ones up here I'll leave, so I didn't wanna go too far with the color or anything. We need to do a little bit of false edge masking down here and again I'm putting that on last so that we can peel it straight off and now we've got the water cleaner <coughs> so this will be my last job for the day uh, it's a Monday today I did a Audi A3 front end job just before I actually did a raw video on that too so you may have already seen that one, depending on which order I put these videos up in. And I dedicated that video to John from the UK. He's an avid watcher. I'm sure you're watching again here, John. So, hello and thanks for watching. But um, yeah, that one was dedicated to John for the sake of talking about wet on wet primers. Um, and look, to be honest, where possible, I try to avoid using them. Um, especially on bonnets and bit large panels like that. Look, I, I, I actually have no qualms at all using it on um, smaller panels and like guards and and bumpers and those kind of things. But yeah, I just try to avoid it. Could, look, as I was saying in that video, um, ah, that that was a fail. <laughs> I'm doing. Uh, will that make it? Yeah, no, I'm doing that again. I want to get one nice, one nice neat thing. That was um, that was very average that thing's probably in my way give it a nice that's a bit better oh mate and have a look at that distance perfect within a centimeter hmm might actually need to cover that step down there too. <laughs> we'll do it. I know that the way the, this, this is a downdraft booth, but it all seems to suck towards this area here. So you can see that's where all the paint's actually all even built up, you can see there. So I'm not worried really about what's going on down the back of the booth. I know the way that the air flows in this booth. All right, so I just threw my spray suit on and a pair of gloves. I usually do actually wear my air fed respirator, but for a job this size, we're barely even gonna be spraying any paint. And in a booth like this, you can see it goes straight down there anyway. So, yep, I'm just wearing this little half mask. It may give it a good blow down. I've actually been using this one lately. I keep it in my back pocket at all times. Like this little cool little thing. I actually got it with the gun that we're going to be using for clear on this job. Which is the Iwata W300. So, Spray Guns Direct sent one of them out for me to do a review on and it was like a Elite Platinum. It was, it's like a limited edition one. And, um, this came in and I'm like, man, that's actually pretty good. I thought I'd throw it in the back pocket of my spray suit and been loving it ever since. So go down to two bar, which on this gun is actually a bit low. So no blender. I just decided to put a bit of color just over those, um, Those stone chips up there. Keep that colour nice and tight. So that's the R150Q. 
So these guns technically, I actually think they're obsolete by now. I think these guns here, the R150 has been replaced by the R160. So it's got a nice tight little fan on it. I, was, I actually use it at the lower pressure anyway. So as you can see, it's really nice to, um, but it's just very precise and you can just sort of like feather that trigger in. Um, so yeah, look, I, I managed to keep the, the color really nice and tight. I didn't go far beyond those lines. Yet, as I say, I reckon if I had have tried to go off, off those lines, we would have seen a bit of an edge. So you may notice that I didn't even use any blender this time because yeah, uh, being that it is a spot repair, I didn't want to build up the blender in all these edges and as you will see, it's not really necessary on small jobs like this. So Stando Blue is the base coat I'm using in case you're new to the channel, but I imagine most of you guys would know that. And Stando Blue is actually exactly the same stuff as Chromax Pro and also Spee's High Tech. Spee's Hecka High Tech is actually exactly the same stuff. So I've cranked the booth up to about 27 degrees. That's what I got it at. It's actually a bit of a rainy day out there today, so the humidity is high. But even in, in saying all that, the humidity was at like 50 degrees last I checked. Sorry, 50% humidity. And um, it's still drying relatively nice and fast. But that's looking good in the base coat. I'm actually pretty happy with how that's looking. So we'll get that clear gun. So yeah, the amount of color, I only mixed up, um, how much was it? 150 mils of color for this. So this is our clear gun. That's that gun I was telling you guys about before, W300 Elite. So I might actually put a link to this in the description if you guys are interested in it. But I must admit, at, at first, I didn't like this gun. Because I was um, comparing it to the R150s and the R160s and um, I found this gun was a little bit slow. But after using it a few more times, I'm, I don't know, I'm starting to grow on me. But it's not really good for anything much smaller than this, to be honest. Because it, it just doesn't put enough material on, even in the 1.2. I've actually got to do a, um, a review on this gun on my main channel. But um, yeah, I'll get around to that soon. So go two bar. So it's very, very precise, this gun. And it, it really doesn't put a load of material on. It doesn't put anywhere near as much material on as the A&I mini guns do. So, oh, but have a look at it. Like, it's a beautiful gun, it really is. And you can just tell that the build quality is impeccable. So this is like the, the baby brother of the W400. If you put this right side by side by the W400 Bellaria, it's basically just a shrunk down version of that. Okay, so now I've got to do the, the blend, the clear blend. So this is straight up fade out thinner. Yeah, this stuff here, in the, this gun here is fade out thinner. Just straight up fade out thinner, that's all. Again in the R150.
looking pretty good, man. I'm pretty happy with that, eh? Nice and neat. We haven't overloaded all the edges, so what we'll do next is um, unmask that lower, oh, what are we doing there? Unmask that bit at the bottom there, um, where I put that, that false edge, this is what we call false edge masking. And we'll have a look and see Ah man, that's awesome. So we really haven't overloaded that edge. We'll just give that a very fine buff up in the morning and that'll be perfect. Um, we'll probably take this off now too. But because the W300 is very um, precise and it doesn't overload the material, we haven't got big thick edges there and we've got no risk of running. Look, it's a bit peely, but they're meant to be. These, these vehicles, these Jeeps are one of the peeliest factory finishes ever um but now look there's there's one little yeah there's one little nib here well wow, that's actually a big one to be fair um so we'll get that out in the morning yeah maybe another tiny little one there run the buff over those blends so basically that ak350 fade out thinner that just melts the clear coat in and makes it and it'll make it in one nice uniform finish once we've buffed it up as I say, look, it's not ideal. You would rather do the entire panel, but hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Have a look at that. Nice, nice, nice. Nice little way to finish the Monday afternoon. And yeah, I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up, share it around with your friends, and until next time, get out there and paint some shit. Come on out.